A couple of years ago, I took a cruise that changed what I thought was possible when it came to cruising. Before this cruise, if I'd booked a four night itinerary and been given seven ports, I would have assumed that there had been some kind of mistake, but there was no mistake. This wasn't just a strange one-off itinerary either, you can book this cruise right now. I was invited by a cruise line called Celestial to join them on a four night iconic Aegean cruise from Athens. I had never heard of Celestial at this point, but as soon as I got that itinerary, I knew that this cruise would be nothing like any cruise I'd ever been on before. I didn't quite know how different it would be, but the ship, the itinerary, the cruise line, everything about it surprised me. I didn't know how I would feel about doing two ports per day. I wasn't sure if I'd be able to get a proper experience only being in the port for a morning or an afternoon. Normally when you take a cruise, you're docked from say 9 a.m. until 5, 6 p.m. in the evening. The idea of doing anything different just hadn't crossed my mind because I didn't know that it existed. One of the main reasons that I cruise is to relax and I thought that I might be exhausted from all of the constant exploring. I didn't know how early I really would have to get up on this cruise, but more about that later. The ship that I was going to sail on was an ex-Royal Caribbean ship. She was built in the early 1980s and originally called Song of America. She's now called Celestial Olympia. I'd never been on a cruise ship before that was built before around the mid 90s. I didn't know if it would feel run down. I didn't know if the ship would feel old. I didn't know anything about Celestial apart from the fact that they were a Greek cruise line and I didn't speak a word of Greek. The first big difference happened on embarkation day because we embarked the ship, we were on board the ship by 9.30 in the morning. If you're used to cruising, you will know that that is not normal at all. Normally you will embark between around midday and 3 p.m. But 9.30 in the morning is incredibly early. We had to do that because we were sailing to a second port on embarkation day. We set sail around 11.30 in the morning and we got to Mykonos at around 6pm. All celestial cruises are all inclusive as standard, they include food, they include drinks, they include a couple of excursions and I think celestial are able to offer all inclusive at a really decent price because you're so rarely on the ship. Most of the time people are off and they're exploring the ports. Our cruise costs less than £500 which is $700 for four nights for seven ports, for drinks, for gratuities, excursions, that's really good value. I guess the payoff is you cruise on a smaller cruise ship, but that didn't bother me at all. I thought it was really fun. In every bar around the ship, you would find two menus. One would be the included menu and one would be the cost extra menu. I just never opened that cost extra menu because there were so many things included. Why even look? My total on board spend for this cruise came to five euros and I'm pretty used to not spending that much money on a cruise, but five euros is good even for me. I think three or four euros of that was chocolate chip cookies, so. There were certain design features on this ship that definitely gave away the age, especially this section at the back. They don't normally make ships like that anymore. And the ship didn't really have a main atrium or a main theater in the same way that modern cruise ships do. This big lounge was the kind of theatre area. This is where the shows were every single evening, where you would meet for your excursions. The shows were as good, they could have been in the theatre, there just wasn't a theatre on board. So this, this was where everything happened. One thing that I've never experienced before on a cruise that happened on this ship was that on deck five and deck seven, the ceiling height would be one and a half times the height of all of the other decks. This is where most of the public areas were and they wanted to make those spaces kind of as light and bright and spacious as possible. What that means though is that deck six only exists for a tiny percentage of the ship and it's kind of confusing. It was quite cool, I see why they did it, but I've never been on a ship that has that kind of layout before. Deck Six just stops. It just doesn't exist beyond a certain point. The whole layout of the ship was a bit kind of up and down. There was this bar around the funnel and I am convinced that a lot of people never managed to find this bar. You had to walk up certain stairs and along certain corridors and it really wasn't that easy to find. A couple of times I was convinced that I had lost the plot because I just could not find my way to this bar. Your Britishism of the week is lost the plot and it very much is what it sounds like. If you have lost the plot, you're not really able to understand what's going on. You might be acting a bit silly because you've just, you've lost the plot. And I lost the plot a few times trying to find my way to that bar. There were a lot of languages spoken on board this cruise, but speaking English only wasn't a problem. There were quite a lot of English speakers. On the first day in this main lounge, everybody had a welcome talk when they would explain how dining worked, how excursions worked. It was incredibly well organized and I think that other cruise lines could learn a lot from Celestial when it comes to organization. 
There are no set dining times on Celestial, which I loved. You just showed up to the restaurant and were seated. At the time, there was quite a lot of table sharing going on, but this was pre-pandemic, so I'm not sure that as much table sharing would be happening now. Only dinner was served to you by the waiters. Breakfast and lunch were both a kind of buffet style. The Celestial Olympia has this big main dining room and it also has a buffet. The food served in both was pretty much the same thing. So if you saw something on the dining room menu and you couldn't be bothered to go and sit down for dinner, you could just go to the buffet and it was almost guaranteed that you would get the same thing. Because this cruise was all inclusive, you could just walk up and you could pick up a can of Coke and you could sit down with it. It was amazing. I thought the quality of the food was really good. There was a lot of variety, a lot of vegan and vegetarian options. I'm not a huge foodie, but I'm pretty convinced that everybody could find something that they wanted on that menu. If you're not in the mood to try new things, they do have things like fish and chips on the menu. So if you're up for just home comforts, you'll be completely fine as well. Our evening in Mykonos was lovely, but it was getting dark by the time that we disembarked. We had a quick wander around and then it was pretty much time to get back to the ship. Mykonos has a lot of cats, cats everywhere. So whatever you plan to do in Mykonos, you have to schedule into your walk. Every three meters, you're probably going to stop and go, oh, a little cat. So just be prepared for that. So many cats in Mykonos. On the second day of our cruise, we had an excursion and we had to meet at 7.15 a.m. We were in Turkey in the morning. I'm not a morning person at all, but also I do want to get the money's worth out of the cruise. So I wasn't going to miss an included excursion. Early mornings became a theme of this cruise, for sure. I remember on our tour they explained to us that technically we were in Asia and we were going back to Europe in the afternoon. I think Turkey is a bit of a, a questionable one whether it's Asia or Europe but they told us when we were there we were in Asia and we were heading back to Europe in the afternoon. Who knew that was possible? I certainly didn't. We went to Ephesus, which is an ancient Greek city and one of the seven ancient wonders of the world. It was built around 100 BC and they started the restoration in the 1970s. I think it's funny how this was 2000 years old and I managed to show up within 50 years of it being rediscovered. Pretty cool. We went to a library that was two thousand years old, two thousand years old. An important thing to know is that if you're visiting somewhere like this or you're in a lot of Europe it does cost money to use the public toilets. Even if you're at a tourist site or you're on an excursion with a cruise line you still have to pay to use the public toilets. I remember all of us queuing at this stop for, for the toilets. That's why I thought I would remind you because it's not worth forgetting the coins. After this, our excursion took us to a rug factory. And if you've been on many excursions, you're probably pretty familiar with this. Often what will happen on cruise line excursions is that they'll take you to a factory or a place. It's free entertainment for you and they get a chance to try and sell you things. It was strange because it was about 10.30 in the morning and they gave us all an alcoholic drink and then laid out all of these rugs on the floor. It was interesting, but I didn't buy a rug for a couple of reasons. Firstly, I could buy a cruise for the price of a proper rug. And secondly, my cat Hudson would just rip it to shreds. And I, I didn't go on a cruise to buy a rug, but it was interesting to see how they made them anyway. When I was walking around doing my tour, I was chatting to all of the crew who were on board and they all really loved this ship. It was so nice they would say things to me like, oh, well, they just don't make them like they used to. I know 39 isn't old by human standards, but by cruise ship standards, that's pretty, for a cruise ship, that's pretty old. One of my favourite places on the ship is this bar that's around the funnel. I think this gives away the fact that the ship was owned by Royal Caribbean. A lot of the other Royal Caribbean ships, when they sold them to other companies, they made them take down the funnel bar, but that didn't happen on this ship. The Celestial Olympia got to keep her funnel bar. A lot of modern cruise ships do have a big lounge or a bar like this with glass windows that go around the edges. This one though was unlike anyone I've ever been in before because it vibrated so much, especially when you set sail. I can just imagine if this ship came out now, everybody in the Facebook groups complaining how they couldn't hear themselves think, but I quite liked it. That's definitely something they've improved in recent decades, but it reminded me that I was on a ship and it was just, it was just fun, but it really did vibrate quite a lot. I had a mini suite cabin, which is the only suite I've ever had on any cruise ship. And it does sound fancy, but it is more comparable to an ocean view on a modern cruise ship. When they built cruise ships like this in the 1980s, balconies weren't really a priority. So almost all of the cabins just have a window. 
My cabin had this huge seating area, a big bed, tons of storage and a bathroom with a bath. I'd never had a bath on a cruise ship before and it was absolutely amazing. That's definitely one of my cruising goals is to get back to having a bath on a cruise. I know I'm gonna get a lot of comments about how I pronounce the word bath. That is how we say it in the south of England. In the north, you'll say bath, but down here, it's definitely bath. Bath, bath, bath. Yeah, it does sound ridiculous, I know. Cruising from Athens is probably one of the only places in the world where the plumbing on the cruise ship is better than the plumbing on land. If you're staying on land in Athens, you can't put any toilet paper down the toilet. You'll have a bin, a trash can next to the toilet where you'll put your paper. You cannot flush any of the paper down the toilet. On the cruise ship, you can though, because the ship was built for Royal Caribbean. And I don't think Royal Caribbean passengers would be very happy if they were told that they couldn't flush toilet paper. For some reason, we actually had a toilet roll on both sides of our toilet. Never did find out why. Maybe it's just more options or for somebody who's left-handed. I don't know. The early morning theme continued on this cruise and our next excursion met at 7.30 a.m. Slightly later than the 7.15 that we had the day before, but it was still about three hours earlier than I would normally get up. We visited Rhodes and we were actually in port for the entire day. We had lunch in the buffet, which was never really designed like this. This area was originally open and they've put kind of a soft roof on it. I had a burger for lunch and it was at this dinner that I realized how much healthier everybody else was. Everybody on this cruise was eating salads, they were eating fish. The Mediterranean diet really is, is a healthy one. It is a healthy one. Even on the days where we didn't do excursions, I had to get up pretty early. Sometimes we would be in port from 7 a.m. till midday. And if I got up at the time that I wanted to, I probably would have missed the entire port. In the afternoon, we visited Santorini, which was cool. I had never been to Santorini before. I have to admit, most of my Santorini experience was taken up by me thinking about the donkeys who were forced to carry tourists up and down the hill. There's around 600 steps to the top and it really is a tough walk. We did the walk in the evening and it was still really warm and really tricky. The donkeys are left out for hours in the day without food, without water, and they're made to carry tourists up and down this hill. If you can't walk, there is a cable car that can take you there, but please do not take the donkeys in Santorini. It's really, it's, ho it's really horrible. We had to tender in and out of Santorini, which gave us a great chance to have a look at the other cruise ships. The Celebrity Edge was there. At the time, that was the newest cruise ship for Celebrity and very exciting. There was a Holland America ship too, one from Silver Sea, and I think one from Crystal. On this cruise, Celestial Cruises kept all of our passports and gave them back on the last day. This I've had happen to me a couple of times before. It tends to happen when you're going through different countries or it's needed for immigration reasons. On the last day, we went to the reception desk. We queued for about 10 minutes, maybe. It was a really fast queue and got our passports back. I have more information about this on my website, but just be aware that this is something that can happen and it can happen on any cruise. It's happened to me cruising on rivers. It's happened to me cruising in Asia. It's happened to me cruising in Europe. It can happen anywhere. I felt very comfortable with this cruise and I fit in with all of the other passengers. There was a wide range of ages and a lot of nationalities on board. One cruise where I didn't really fit in with the other passengers was a 50 plus cruise I took at age 25. Watch this video next to find out if I fit in and if I had a good time on a 50 plus cruise age 25.